Bakscore, if you can move them. Sorry? Bakscore, by any chance? They're coming. Right. Thanks. Gerald Gary, Washington, Boston Globe. 21 point lead. What happened after that, and what saved you? Like, what gave you the fortitude to, to make plays enough to hold on, obviously, on the biggest stage? Yeah, I mean, you were going to expect a run from them because they had a 19 point quarter. And so, you know, just by the type of shots they take alone, you knew they were going to make some kind of run. Uh, some of those came at the expense of our offense. I thought maybe, you know, we missed a couple reads. They changed coverages and they changed matchups on like three or four straight possessions, and we missed the read. Uh, to get the right shot. So I'd say probably 60% of the shots we took in that stretch, we got to get better. And 40% I was okay with, we just missed them. Uh, but our, you know, our one shot defense uh, and our ability to, to get back to the game plan, they put a ton of pressure on your uh, defensive game plan throughout. And uh, you just got to stick with the discipline of it. So we were able to do that and make plays down the stretch. Dave, second row on the left. Joe, you guys were able to build a 15 point lead, headed into the fourth. And in that 19 point quarter, you alluded to for the Mavs, Jalen and Jason combined for 22. Uh, what was working for them that maybe wasn't necessarily there for them in the, in the first half? Uh, nothing. Our first half points per shot was 1.23. And so I thought we were getting like really good looks. They just weren't falling. Um, and so you just got to stick with it over the course of the entire game. I thought in the third quarter, we found the right uh, spacing. We found the right frequency. And we made like the, we made the right read six straight times, which got us those shots. And uh, they were able to fall. Uh, and then that's where, you know, the, stre the second stretch of that fourth quarter, uh, we missed some of those reads, and you know they were able to come back into the game. So, uh, just the, the, those guys' ability to know that what shots they're taking uh, and continue to take the right ones over and over again. John, back right. Joe, John Corrales, Boston Sports Journal. You went with Xavier Tillman uh, in this one, and he ended up as a, a plus nine overall. What did you see from him? What made you go in that direction? Um, he played in the Western Conference for three, four years. And so he's been, he's played against the Mavs. And so he's had that experience. He, uh, uh, Memphis has used a similar game plan uh, that we have. So he was used to that. Uh, and I thought, you know, he, with that comfort level of playing against those guys for so long, he was going to be able to execute the things that we needed to execute. And so I thought he did a great job in our switching. He did a great job in our screening, getting to our spacing. Uh, and, you know, and that's what we talk about with those state, with the, those guys is regardless of who's in, who's out. I trust uh, the next man up because of the work they put in. And and the staff that uh, prepares them. Jared on the right, third row. Jared Weiss, The Athletic. Uh, you used to get asked if you guys took too many threes for a long time, and it doesn't seem like that question gets asked too much anymore. You had double the number of threes they had for a lot of this game. They start to come back when they actually start taking them. How has your team been able to just stick with that, play through the misses, you're letting them attack your cross matches and they're taking two. How does that math play out in the end? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think you got asked that question a lot just because it was new. Uh, and, um, you know, anytime you're, you're in developing a new philosophy or a new style, uh, it just takes time to for understanding and execution. And so uh, credit to the guys where uh, we've decided uh, how we're going to play and uh, we fight to do that. And, um, you know, but also uh, just being flexible in that. So it's not, we don't want to just settle for those. I think our guys have done a good job fighting for for the right shot based on what the defense is giving us. Uh, we were able to get some of those uh, in the third quarter. So uh, I think it's just, it just says a lot about them. The, the guys understand the game. They understand why we do what we do, and they work to execute it as best as they can. Jay here in the second row. What goes into weathering the storm when Kyrie and Luca come out as aggressive as they are and and they're firing on all cylinders in that first half? Yeah. Um, what, what, what resilience goes into just kind of Sticking with it and staying disciplined when yeah. when they're going like that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's first having an awareness as to how are they scoring, what are they doing. Uh, you got to ask yourself: Are we executing the game plan? Are we are we giving the shots up that we're willing to give up? Or, and so you know, we uh, I think it was one of the quarters we had like 26 points of shots of points that we can control, and so you got to fight like hell to take those away. Once you take those away, then you can either execute or game plan or work to adjust. And so I thought our guys did a great job of understanding the points that we could control, and they fought to take those away throughout the rest of the game. Tim, all the way in the back. Joe, you guys had a real big run Thank you. late in the first quarter of game one. I think you had one in the third quarter of game two. You had two really big ones tonight. Is it just something innate about this team that they know when there's an opportunity to really hit the gas, or is it just talent sometimes when you, when you have these big stretches of 
pulling away and making it seem so easy? Well, I would say both teams have a lot of talent, so I think you have to have talent to get to this spot. So uh, that's a given if you want to make it this far. Uh, but our guys have a great basketball IQ. They have an understanding of are we playing the right way, are we taking the right shots, are we giving up the right shots. And they, have, they know exactly uh, when we're not doing that. And so they have an innate ability to control the runs of the game with the philosophy that we have and, and execute the things. And so it's just constant uh, building awareness. Are we getting the right shots, are we, take, are we giving up the right shots, and then are we winning the transitions? And, uh, you know, the guys do a great job of working towards understanding that. Adam? One thing you've talked about a lot during the years, how it's not supposed to go a certain way. The game's not supposed to go a certain way. Um, we've seen, you know, occasionally there's big lead goes away, but for the most part, you guys figure it out in the end um, throughout the season. What um, has been the process of the guys kind of grasping that and not kind of, you know, when they're right on the edge, not falling over it? Uh, just what we talked about, having an understanding of, like, we know teams are going to make runs. Can we manage those? And we know why... Um, we make runs and we know why uh, other teams make run on us. And so you just have to constantly problem solve throughout the game. You have to ask yourself why every single possession. Why did that happen? Why did this happen? Uh, was this what we talk about? Was it not? And they, the guys, they fight for that because of their basketball IQ. So um, they spent a lot of time understanding that. And, and that's part of the game, right? Like they got out to a, a big lead and I forgot. I don't even know what we were down. What were we down? 13. And uh, so like that's just part of the game. Uh, but it's understanding why. Why are we down 13? Is it effort? Is it execution? Uh, is it things we can control? And once we answer those questions, we can move on you know, to the next phase of the game. Vinny, third row in the center. Joe, uh, Vince Gilbo, Yahoo Sports. How are you doing? Good. Uh, Jalen had the big third quarter when he helped you guys push to the lead. And then in the fourth, he had the big jumper when Dallas was charging. Just the poise that he's played with. How have you seen that grow, not just yeah. in this series, but since you started coaching them? Uh, there's not, I mean, how can I explain Jalen? The guy just has a growth mindset. He just wants to get better. He, he yearns to get better. He's not afraid to uh, face his, his uh, weaknesses, you know, on the court. Uh, and so uh, when you have that type of mindset, you, you're just going to be able to take on uh, every situation that the game brings you. So he puts himself in every single situation that he sees in a game. He uses six, seven, eight coaches a day. And every situation on both ends of the floor, he puts himself in that. And that's, that's how you have to grow. Uh, is to you know become vulnerable on the things that you know make you uncomfortable, and he, he does that. Tim, back left. Joe, you guys have been able to put a lot of pressure on Luca at both ends. You're obviously able to pressure up with Jalen and Drew all the way up to court, and then you're able to go at him with a bunch of different options on offense, make him work a lot. Have you noticed that working throughout the game in terms of sort of being able to wear him down as the game? I, I don't think he gets worn down. He looks pretty fresh out there. Um, you know, we, I think we could uh, do a better job of being intentional about the offense and the spacing at times. Um, but I, I, I don't see him getting I don't see him getting tired at all. Right. Yeah. Follow up on. Go ahead. Two. Just in terms of the intentionality on offense, mm -hmm. did you think that was an issue in that stretch in the fourth quarter when things went silent? Yeah. Yeah. It, what, they, we were trying to play fast, create advantages, and create uh, indecision, but we didn't create any indecision. And so when you don't when you miss the first read. It's not a lack of uh, execution from the guys. It's not, it's not a lack of like trying to execute. It's if you miss the first read and you miss the first window, it's really hard to get that window back against the team. And so, you know, that's what we were able to do in the third quarter. We found the, the first read, bang, right there. And we, we got it like six, seven, eight times in a row. If you miss that first one, it's a nightmare to get a second and a third one. And that's when you end up taking a couple of shots that you don't want to take. So it wasn't for a la it wasn't because they weren't trying to. We just missed it. You know, they do a good job of changing matchups and changing space spacings and fluctuating it. So. You know, there's probably about eight possessions where you know we'll definitely watch and be like, we gotta, we we gotta do a better job of seeing the first read, and when we don't, we gotta find the second one faster. Last two here in the front, and then Ramona, uh, Steve Buckley from the Athletic. Uh, Joe, you made the comment before the game: the closer you are to beating them up, the closer you are to losing. Yeah, that's front and center now with a three nothing series lead. So, what can you do to reinforce that? message over the next couple of days? Yeah, I mean, just stick to the things that we've been doing. I mean, have an understanding. I think, you know, we were, we were down 13. I expected that. We were down one and a half. I expected that. So you got to expect the expected. You got to understand that, uh, the, you know, we're, we're just as vulnerable, if not more vulnerable than they are. And we have to play that way. And so uh, as long as we have that mindset um, and, you know, when you understand that you're vulnerable and your back's against the wall, you, you got to fight. And so that's the mindset that we have to have.
Ramona on the left. Hi, Joe, Ramona Shelburne, ESPN. Hi. Um, you know, Derek, Derek wasn't shooting the ball all that well for most of the game and then hits a couple of really big ones in that fourth quarter. I know that's kind of what he does sometimes for you guys, but is that is that just his mentality? Is that your your emphasis on, on continue to shoot the three, the just lean into the math? Where does that come from? Um, again, it's all about taking the right shots. It's all about taking what the defense gives you. They're playing a unique defense against us uh, because – they're one of the best teams in the league at protecting the rim, and they have two great rim protectors. And so if you try to become stubborn, you put yourself in a disadvantage situation at the other end of the floor. Uh, our defense starts with our offense. And so if we don't take the right shot, we can't guard them. And uh, our team has the discipline to fight for the spacing and to fight to take the right shot, whatever that shot may be. Derek has a green light to shoot you know, the shots because his skill set is taking the shots that make sense. You know, he can get into the paint uh, and shoot the two-foot floater off there. He can shoot off the dribble threes. He can shoot catch and shoot threes. So uh, I love the fact that he continues to play. Uh, his his confidence never wavers based on the shots he takes. And uh, you can always count on him to make the big ones. Thank you, Coach. Thanks.